Welcome back to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Heather, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today we start a case that we will continue together next week. This is a six-year-old female spayed husky. She has come to you because she's lip smacking. Her family says she does not want to eat or drink, and her breather, breathing pattern has changed and become noisy. During physical examination, you notice some gagging and upper airway noise, so you decide to radiograph her throat region. I think that the throat or laryngeal area, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit to give us all context for what we're looking at, I think this area can be one of the trickier ones to assess radiographically. While you're getting a look at the radiograph, some reasons that I think this area are tricky. First of all, making good radiographs of this region can be difficult. It can be a really difficult area to keep straight because of the patient's head position. Additionally, if you're making a radiograph of the larynx region, it could be that the patient is having difficulty breathing or in distress, and that can make it um, that you won't have the luxury of giving sedation in order to improve the radiographs. There's also a lot of complicated anatomy superimposed in a really small area. So all of these things come together to make it sometimes a really tricky little area to assess. Let's start with the big picture. And then what I'd like to do today is just zoom in and go over the specific anatomic details in this region. So the big picture, of course, would be that this is the carlax aspect of the skull. We have the first and second cervical vertebrae, the rest of the cervical vertebral column. Here we can see the esophagus. It's not always visible, but in this case, there's a little bit of gas. And of course, the trachea. So just at the cranial margin of the trachea is where we have the laryngeal region. And that's the part that I'd like to focus on for today's session. Allow me to walk through the anatomy and share my approach with you today. And I'm going to start with a spoiler by saying this is a normal laryngeal pharyngeal region. But if I share my approach, I'm hoping it will help you the next time you have a patient with clinical signs and you want to rule out an upper airway problem. Things we might look for in this region would be a mass, lysis of the hyoid bones, uh, difficulty or distension of the air, uh, airways, things like that. So let's start with my most obvious thing that I usually find I can get, regardless of the radiographic quality, is I start by looking for the basohyoid. The basohyoid is the anchor of the hyoid apparatus. You'll recall that the hyoid apparatus is a series of bones, seen here, that attach the larynx to the skull. So the hyoid apparatus mostly is cranial to the basohyoid bone, although there's one hyoid bone, the thyroid hyoid, that extends caudal to the hyoid bone, and that's the one that joins the hyoid apparatus to the larynx. So let's leave the larynx for now and practice tracing the hyoid bones and naming them. So basohyoid is an unpaired hyoid bone, and it goes from right to left side across the base of the uh, rostral laryngeal area. And so we usually see it end on like this. So it can have increased opacity compared to everything else because it's a summation or an end on view. Extending cranially from the basohyoid bone, as I was saying, is the majority of the hyoid apparatus, and they have this little articulation that makes them look like a cute little animated alien. So the first one is serratohyoid, it's fairly short. Then we have a joint, which is a radiolucent space, the same thing on the other side. The next one after the serratohyoid is epihyoid. Then we have stylohyoid, which takes us up to the base of the skull. There's also anatomically what's called a tympanohyoid, which is a little extension from the stylohyoid that helps it join um, to the uh, base of the skull. It's not usually seen as a distinct radiographic feature. So when we trace the hyoid bones, I'm mostly just looking to make sure that they're relatively appropriately aligned, although some variation is possible even in normal individuals. We of course look to make sure that there isn't any lysis or fracture. Once I'm comfortable that I'm assessed the cranial aspect of the hyoid, if I go caudal from the basohyoid, I'm really only going to see one paired structure, which are the thyrohyoids. And that's what links this hyoid apparatus to the larynx. The larynx is this whole region here, and there's quite a lot to be seen. Of course, you'll recall that the, lar the larynx is composed of multiple cartilages, as well as laryngeal ventricles, and of course, the lumen and the mucosa. For the laryngeal cartil cartilages, they're going to give us an additional challenge every time. You'll recall that cartilage is of soft tissue opacity. We've seen this throughout our musculoskeletal series, 
every time we look at a synovial articulation, we see that it's a radiolucent space. On the edge of our image here, we'll remind ourselves that a synovial articulation, in this case, the temporomandibular joint, or even something like an intervertebral disc, have a soft tissue opacity. So if the larynx is made of cartilage, it's also gonna have a soft tissue opacity, which is gonna make it hard for us to see it on radiographs because it will silhouette with adjacent structures. However, it's quite common for laryngeal cartilages to undergo mineralization. When they undergo mineralization, they can have a stippled or a less uniform appearance. You may see that there's a little bit of increased opacity here and a mineralization here. These are the structures that are summating between the cartilage and dystrophic mineralization to show us that shadow of the most caudal aspect of the larynx, which is the cricoid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage is usually, let me go back to the lateral view. The cricoid cartilage is usually a little bit broader on the dorsal aspect, and it's more narrow ventrally. They call this a signet ring appearance. The other cartilage that's here is gonna be the thyroid cartilage, which are paired. Those can be seen with a little bit of dystrophic mineralization, as in this case, but we don't always see their margins very clearly. Another thing that makes assessment of the laryngeal region tricky is that in addition to the soft tissue opacity of the cartilages, the dystrophic mineralization of the cartilages and the superimposition, we're also dealing with gas opacity. Not only is there gas in the lumen, but you can see a well-defined gas opacity here. It's quite common to have gas in the laryngeal ventricles, and that will create a summation that has this sort of ovoid, or sometimes it's a balloon shape, and it can be quite variable in size. I often find, regardless of how much detail I can appreciate in the more caudal laryngeal structures that we just described, I often find that I can locate the epiglottis in many dogs and cats with a well-positioned view. It does depend a little bit on how much gas is in the airway, whether we can appreciate both the dorsal and ventral margins of the epiglottis, as in this case, or sometimes we only appreciate the dorsal margin, for example. The caudal edge of the soft palate often contacts or comes close to the epiglottis. This can vary with radiographic positioning and it also can be a breed variation in dogs. The position of the epiglottis relative to the soft palate will vary depending on if the dog or cat is nasal breathing or oral breathing. And it can vary uh, quite substantially. In this case, you can see that the epiglottis has a fairly neutral position in the middle, and then we have a decent amount of gas distension of the nasopharynx, so the nasopharynx being that gas-filled space, dorsal to the soft palate, and the oropharynx, the gas-filled space, ventral to the soft palate. The rostral part here is going to be the pharynx, and that leads us into both the larynx, which we've already looked at, and dorsal to the larynx through this soft tissue opacity on the dorsal aspect of the cricoid cartilage this soft tissue summation here is our cricopharyngeus or upper esophageal sphincter, leading us into that gas distended esophagus. I hope that our tour through the larynx will be useful for you the next time that you have to look at a case where you're wondering if there could be a mass or even a foreign body in this region. Next week, we'll do the next step in diagnostic imaging for this case. And no, it won't be a CT. What are your guesses about what we might do next? Be sure to review the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions or comments on social media.